हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल दी बायोलॉजी इन दिस ट्यूटोरियल यू विल बी लर्न अबाउट एंटीजन इट इज आवर कॉमन एक्सपीरियंस दैट पीपल हु रिकवर फ्रॉम सर्टेन इंफेक्शंस बिकम देयर आफ्टर इम्यून टू द डिजीज अगेन इम्यूनिटी इज हाईली स्पेसिफिक an individual who recovers from measles is protected against the measles virus but not against other common viruses such as cold chicken pox or mumps normally many of the responses of the immune system initially the destruction and elimination of invading organisms and any toxic molecules produced by them because the immune reactions are destructive in nature it becomes necessary that they be made in response only to molecules that are foreign to the host and not to those of the host itself now we are in a pandemic situation due to src of to virus and the need of the our demand is to develop an effective vaccine against the src cop2 virus but sometimes we see that after an individual attacks with the virus and recover from there he or she may be infected further within 2-3 months or more that is the challenge we need to protect our body for a long period of time of that particular virus so scientists are struggling to find out the way how an effective vaccine is generated particularly to further effect by the virus let's see some important talk about antigen what is antigen any foreign substance that elicits an immune response to generate or production of specific antibody molecules when introduced into the tissue of a susceptible animal and is capable of combining with the specific antibodies formed antigens are generally of high molecular weight but sometimes low molecular weight like heptans it combined with some carrier proteins may act as or function as antigens antigens are commonly proteins or polysaccharides but polypeptide lipids nucleic acids and many other materials can also function as anti gen an antigen have different epitope or antigenic determinant sites and on the basis of these antigenic determinant types or epitopes or nature of of the antigen epitopes antibody can react to this particular antigens antibody possess some special regions antigen binding sites through which antibody can neutralize the antigen there are different types of antigens these 
antigens can be divided into two parts one is complete antigens other one is incomplete or partial or so called heptan complete antigen are able to induce antibody form and produce a specific and observable reaction with the antibody so produced on the other hand incomplete or partial antigens or heptans are incapable of inducing antibody formation by themselves but can be capable of inducing antibody on combining with larger molecules normally protein as a carrier molecule which serve as a carrier we can say that antibody so we can say that we can say that antigen are two types one is complete and other one is incomplete or partial or heptans in case of complete they are able to induce antibody formation and produce a specific and observable reaction with the antibody so produced while incomplete antigens are incapable of inducing antibody formation by themselves but when they can combine with a larger carrier molecules like proteins they can be function as a complete antigen here you can see a incomplete or partial antigens or heptan molecules when attached to a larger carrier molecules particularly proteins or some other molecules they can form a complete antigen and produce or react to the antibody what are the characteristics of a good antigen area of structural stability and chemical complexity within the molecule sufficient stress lacking extensive repeating units a minimal molecular weight of 8000 to 10000 daltons although heptans with molecular weight as low as 200 dalton be also used in presence of a carrier protein ability to be processed by the immune system immunogenic regions which are accessible to the antibody forming mechanisms structural elements that are sufficiently different from the host for peptide antigens regions containing at least 30% of immunogenic amino acids for peptide antigen significant hydrophilic or charged residues are also needed okay carrier protein can help to the heptan to became a heptan carrier conjugate and to elicit an antibody or to generate immune response to produce antibody molecules there is antibody to conjugate of heptan and carrier molecules some different types of are heptan are available when sometimes it conjugate to it dnp or dsa and form heptan carrier conjugate if heptan are alone induced there does not produce antibodies when heptans are combined with bsa it produce anti bsa and then heptan carrier conjugates when injects it produce 
NPDMP majors and NPBSA minor. Immune response. This is a fundamental aspect of an immunology, immune response. An immune response is a reaction which occurs within an organism for the purpose of defending against foreign invaders. This includes a variety of different microorganisms including viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungi. There are two distinct aspects of immune response. One is innate and other one is adaptive. The innate or non-specific immune response are given by skin, mucosal, mucous membrane, neutrophils, macrophages, monocytes and soluble factors like cytokines and complementary factors. While adaptive or specific immunity a particular pathogens are obtained through dendritic cells, T cells, B cells as well as antibodies or immunoglobulins. Immune responses may also be generated against smaller substances or heptans which coupled with some carrier proteins like BSA, keyhole, limpet, cyanin. A variety of molecules drugs, simple sugar, amino acids, small peptides, phospholipids, triglycerides may function as heptans. Antigens that elicit strong immune response are said to be a strong immunogenic. Here you can see some aspects of antigenicity versus immunogenicity. Sometimes we can Sometimes we are confused these two terms antigenicity and immunogenicity. Although a substance that induces a specific immune response is usually called an antibody, it is more appropriately called an immunogen. Antigenicity is the ability to combine specifically with the final products of the above response that is antibodies and or cell surface receptor. All molecules that have the property of immunogenicity also have the property of antigenicity but the reverse is not true that means we can say all property of immunogenicity That means we can say that all molecules that have the property of immunogenicity are called or heavy antigenicity, but all immunogenicity heavy molecules are not antigens. Heptans are antigens but incapable by themselves of inducing a specific immune response or lack of immunogenicity until it is coupled with a carrier protein or molecules. Immunogenicity is the ability of a foreign substance such as an antigen to provoke an immune response in the body of a human or other animal. In other words, immunogenicity is the ability to induce a humoral through antibody or cell mediate immune response through dendritic cells, B cells, T cells. Immunogenicity is determined in part by the nature of immunogen, especially the four properties they have. Number one, foreignness, two, molecular size and 3. Chemical composition and heterogeneity 4. Susceptibility to antigen processing and presentations Foreignness This is an important character of, of an immunogen 
when an antigen is introduced into an organism the degree of its immunogenicity depends on the degree of its foreignness where the molecules comes whether it is come from own body own origin or come from outside of the body the greater the phylogenetic distance between two species the greater the structural disparity between them that means the kami antigens are distinctly origins or not if you think human or fish if some antigens coming coming from fish origin the human body treats as a foreign a strong foreign particles but if it comes from a chimpanzee due to less phylogenetic distance it treated as a less antigens in general set molecules are not treated as foreign by the host itself however occasionally it fails to make these distinctions and reacts destructively against the host own molecules and generates some autoimmune disease which can be fatal to the organisms some notable autoimmune diseases in human beings are rheumatoid arthritis inflammatory bowel disease multiple sclerosis next one is molecular size of an immunogen there is a correlation between the size of a macromolecule and its immunogenicity the most active immunogens tend to have a molecular mass of 10000 daltons or more molecular mass less than 5000 to 10000 dalton are poor immunogens next characteristics is chemical composition and heterogeneity synthetic homopolymers polymers composed of a single amino acid or sugar tend to lack immunogenicity regardless of their size two polymers composed of different amino acids or sugars are usually more immunogenic than homopolymers of their constituents primary secondary tertiary and quaternary contributes to the structural complexity of a protein and hence affects its immunogenicity last one is susceptibility to antigen processing and presentation large insoluble molecules generally are more immunogenic than smaller ones soluble ones because the larger molecules are more readily phagocytosed and processed macro molecules that cannot be degraded and presented with mature history compatibility compatibility complex molecules or mc molecules are poor immunogenic in nature on most important aspects related to antigen is antigen determinant site or epitope and antigenic determinants or epitopes are those sites on antigens that are recognized by antibodies and receptor presents on t and b cells for cell mediated immunity the characteristics of an epitope is 1 to 6 monosaccharides or 5 to 6 amino acid residues on the surface of the antigen the epitope recognized by an antibody may be dependent upon the presence of a specific three dimensional antigenic conformation a unique site formed by the interactions of two native protein loops or sub units 
the epitope may correspond to a simple primary sequence regions and are linear in form. The range of possible binding site is enormous with each potential binding site having its own structural proteins derived from covalent bonds, ionic bonds and hydrophobic and hydrophilic interactions may be present in the antigens native cellular environment or only exposed or denatured. In their natural form, they may be cytoplasmic or soluble membrane associated or cyclity. The number, location and size of the epitopes depend on how much of the antigen is presented during the antibody making process. Actually, an antigen having several epi epitopes, a small area which is ta actually target of a particular or specific antibody. An antigen have different types of epitopes on the basis of its specificity antibody can react to this and utilize the antigen. Adjuvants. This is another aspect of immunology related to antigens are specially important to develop an effective vaccines and it is also useful to know how the TPR vaccines can be utilized for further course of actions and adjuvants are substances that when mixed with an antigen and injected in E enhance the immunogenicity of that antigen. Often used to boost the immune response when an antigen has low immunogenicity or when only small amounts of an antigens are available. Adjuvants are substances that when mixed with an antigen and injected with E enhance the immunogenicity of the antigens. Often used to boost the immune response when an antigen has low immunogenicity or when only small amounts of an antigen are available. Here you can see a small antigens cannot generate immune response but when it conjugates or combines with the molecules it can generate immune response and protections our body through the process of adjuvants and molecular binding formation process. So thank you. I hope that you will be learn about some new things about antigens.